three weeks uh, in in the national spotlight, whereas Serena's was kind of over the entire year. And I think that's also well, maybe something. I mean, even even if you want to say that, I mean, I'm not totally disagreeing with you here by any means. Um, and this is not a hill I'm willing to down. <laughs> but, I understand. Um, you know. You could say, I mean, Serena's was basically concentrated, I mean, into those four big tournaments. And that's I mean, true. Yes, she had a great year overall, but I mean, that's what sets her apart from everyone are the Grand Slam tournaments. Um, you know, the whole thing about Sportsman of the Year is it's more than just the athletic achievement. Mm-hmm. It's also, you know, I think I think a lot of it also is, you know, what it meant to society. Mm-hmm. A reflection of the time. And I, well, and I say that because I remember when I remember the year that Cal Ripken Jr. broke the record, broke mm-hmm. the streak. Mm-hmm. That basically was him being Sportsman of the Year that year. Yeah, mm-hmm. because that was such a culturally relevant thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where you can actually get into an argument about American Pharaoh, mm-hmm. and maybe even about Carly Lloyd is not to take anything away from Serena Williams. I mean, she had an amazing year, but was she as culturally relevant, you know, as the horse or as the U S women's national team uh, in their performance in which, you know, they, they, they literally captivated the nation, Mm -hmm. as you said, for three weeks. But for a good two weeks of that, they captivated the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, I don't keep up with tennis very much. Didn't really know Serena had that great a year until I heard about it here. And that's fair. I mean, I I, I sort of knew. I knew in the periphery. I think it was about it was about the time the U.S. Open was happening. That's when everything started rising. Because, it, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, if if you do know, um, but I, I think that's the one she lost. That would have been the one to give her. The, the grand slam over the, the, the course of the year. And that was actually the one she lost. But I remember, I, I remember ESPN doing absolutely massive ratings for her matches on TV in primetime. So I, to an extent, I'm not that surprised that she okay. ended up doing it. Cause I, I think she did actually do a pretty good job herself of, of captivating the nation. I, I think there's arguments to be made. I, I think, I think that a lot of the arguments being made on the internet are dumb arguments. I think we, as dumb as we are, may have just had some of the most rational arguments, both for and against her candidacy, as well as the candidacy of other people. Um, so yeah, internet, stop, stop being assholes. Like, like, see, everything comes back around, Wes. Everything comes back around. We we came back to the very beginning of the pod. See, Internet, I get to be an asshole because you're assholes all the other time. Yeah. That was just the one moment. All right, so that's going to take us to our Watch 4. Wes, now now that you're back from Parts Unknown, what have you been watching in the week that was or the week that will be? Uh, I, lo- I watched a lot of uh, Mexican Friends while I was in Parts Unknown. <laughs> nice. I, I kid, of course. I would never watch Friends. There you go. Anyway, um, you caught up on American Horror Story? I, oh, God, I did. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Lord. We're down to the last three episodes. One uh, actually uh, being played as we have recorded the pod tonight. Um, crazy shit's going down at the Hotel Cortez. That's all I can say. Um, after tonight, well, I say tonight's episode, that's Wednesday night when we're recording. That's the... Um, That'll be the final episode of 2015. They'll come back in 2016 with the final two episodes of the season. Mm. Um, it's it's a good story. It's been my only problem with horror story this year. It's been a little spread out. Mm, okay. um, <clears throat> you know, last last week. Well, yeah, the one for okay, the one from two weeks ago was literally all about one storyline. And then this past week, that storyline was completely not even brought up once. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and I understand it's a show of multiple storylines, and I'm not complaining because I've really enjoyed this season. Um, 
but that could be my one critique of it is you know they get they get so far off of some storylines to bring in other ones mm -hmm. that you almost like forget what's going on in other places <laughs> but uh but overall it's been a good season um this has been one I think they've really brought back a lot of things from say season one especially mm -hmm. you're seeing some reoccurring characters um you're seeing things kind of working in together and you know David Murphy the guy or I'm sorry Ryan Murphy the guy who uh basically writes and directs and does all the good stuff for it um he has said that all the seasons intertwine in some way you just have to figure it out so for me, this is one of the first ones where I've really seen it happening. Oh, so nice. it, it's it's been it's been fun. I'll say that it's been fun. It's been interesting. Um, so I, I give it a thumbs up season. I'm really really looking forward to see what's happening because Gaga ended the last episode. She's pissed. Uh oh, rut row. And uh -oh. she said she's ready to make a list of who they're gonna kill. <sighs> Gotta kill everyone. Oops, oh, all I'm dead. So well. Um, I so, you need a, need a need a Star Wars spoiler. No, I don't. Um, what am I watching? Uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of stuff wrapping up. Um, everything pretty much has been wrapped up over the course of the last two weeks. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got wrapped up. Um, Once Upon a Time got wrapped up. Grimm got wrapped up for about a month. Um, with, with the spoiler, no one except everyone saw coming. Um, spoiler alert, Juliet's not dead. Wow. That was... That, that's not a spoiler. Um, so what have I been doing? I've been actually playing uh, a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles X. I am really overwhelmed by this game, and, and somebody on Twitter put it exactly right. They just throw you into the deep end. There's no, oh, here, let me let me hold your hand. Let's take you through the tutorial. Now you're going to push A here, and then you push R to jump, and then you do this, and then you do this, and that's how you win the game, and I'm going to take you through this for the next 40 levels. No, it's just go you're on a different planet go <laughs> figure it out on yourself you little bitch i'm like uh, uh, uh okay okay do i do i kill these no i can't kill these monsters oh can i kill these monsters nope like literally i i, I went swimming i found a different continent i was like oh this is cool this place is cool all of a sudden me an enemy just triggers right behind me one hit kill dead i'm like oh guess it shouldn't come here anymore <laughs> whoops <laughs> so, uh, but it's it's actually been a blast. I'm actually really enjoying. This is the first open world game I've played in quite a long time, and as someone would say, I'm really feeling it. That was Shulk. Also, I love the uh, the Nintendo Direct that happened this week. Uh, the final Smash Brothers um, Nintendo Direct uh, announcing Bayo as a character in Smash is awesome. And you know what else is awesome, Wes? The fact that we get so raw back in our lives. So, take it away. Ed, yeah. of course, last week while I was off in Parts Unknown, uh, a place where many, excuse me, many a wrestler <laughs> has come from in the past, Parts Unknown, uh, a, a manifesto of mine was played on this very podcast, correct? Mm -hmm. My manifesto was played yes. and given to the public in which I express my complete displeasure at the moment with the product about the predictability about how they're trying to shove a, a boring cartoonish Roman reigns down our throat. Mm -hmm. Well, Ed on Sunday night, the TLC pay-per-view tables, ladders, and chairs. Uh, one that I don't think anyone had very high hopes for. Um, WWE surprised us. They did a good job. We had a good TLC, had good fun matches, had some solid matches. Um, everything was kind of a gimmick in it, but y you know, whatever. That's TLC, tables, ladders, and chairs. That's what you get. At the end of the night, Ed, our WWE World Heavyweight Championship match, Roman Reigns and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. Oh, See how I did that for you? See how yes. I did that for you? Well, that's how it's actually uh, pronounced. So Exactly. That is actually how it's pronounced. <laughs> Um, it, it was a ladder match for the world title. Reigns came agonizingly close until he was jumped by our new friends of the League of Nations. Mm. And uh, at the end of the day, Sheamus able to scurry up the ladder 
and retain the title. Well, Ed, after the match, after the League of Nations basically denied Reigns the title again, uh, Reigns Reigns got pretty pissed off. He 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 triple spears the uh, the League of Nations. Um, which if you've never seen one, that's pretty cool. That's when two guys have one guy up on their shoulders. Yay, victory, victory. Oh, God. And Reigns runs right through all of them. Reigns then proceeds to pick up a chair and just start beating the ever-loving holy hell out of Sheamus. Um, the bell starts ringing, ringing, ringing. Here come officials to try to break it up. Here comes the chief operating officer of WWE, Triple H. Uh, Triple H, of course, a former uh, God, twelve-time world champion, I think. Now mm-hmm. with Triple H, I can't remember. You saw it because wrestling is wrestling, or whatever that oh, video messed. was called. So you know the entire story of Triple H. Of course I do. Um, Triple H comes down and he's protecting Sheamus, who of course just happens to be his authority pick to be the champion. Turns around, starts admonishing Reigns. What are you doing? You know, you, you, you're going to have consequences for this. When all of a sudden, Reigns snapped. Oh. Mm. Not, uh, Superman punched uh, Triple H. Started uh, assaulting Triple H with the chair. Uh, this culminates on the outside of the ring of Reigns uh, powerbombing Triple H into the Spanish announce table. And then uh, Samoan dropping him onto the announce table and breaking it. As he's walking away, Triple H being helped to the back, uh, Reigns sprints a good 30 yards and spears Triple H, takes him out completely. And uh, basically TLC goes off the air with the Boston crowd absolutely going crazy, chanting, thank you, Roman. Oh, Exactly, because he took out Triple H, and people are tired. People were tired of this bullshit authority. So we go to Monday Night Raw, where you know Roman Reigns is going to have some consequences because you can't beat up the COO of the corporation, Ed. You can't, Ed, because nope. I know you probably would have by now if you could. Oh, of course, but you can't. That's a no-no. Well, the next night. Um, Raw starts off, Stephanie McMahon, of course, uh, one of the uh, principal owners of the WWE, comes out. And she, uh, speaking for her her husband, who is at home injured, obviously after the assault the night before, uh, she says that uh, her husband asked her not to fire Roman, but that the CEO of WWE, one Vincent Kennedy McMahon, he may think otherwise, and he is on his way to the arena. Oh, no. Yeah, damn right. We hadn't seen Vince in over a year, and Vince McMahon made an appearance. Uh, he calls out Roman Reigns, brings him to the ring, admonishes him. Admonishes. Yes, admonishes mm-hmm. him. Um, and uh, basically is telling Reigns how if he was a little younger, he would just beat the hell out of Reigns uh, and just solve his own problem. Sheamus comes out saying, Mr. McMahon, let me do that beating for you. Oh. And I am so confident that I can beat Roman Reigns that I will put my WWE title on the line here tonight on oh. Raw. Wow. So Vince McMahon adds one small stipulation to the match for Roman Reigns that if Roman Reigns fails to win the WWE title, he is fired. Oh, fantastic. That's how Vince McMahon says So it. obviously he was going to win. <laughs> Ed, how he did it was marvelous. Of course. Uh, interference from A, Vince McMahon, B, the League of Nations, Reigns, uh, going a flurry of Superman punches, including knocking, cold cocking, the 70-year-old CEO of, of a publicly traded company. Awesome. The WWE being cold cocked on the ring apron. Uh, he proceeds to uh, hit Sheamus with a spear. One, two, three, and Ed, on the night, vindication was spelled R-O-M-A-N. Roman Reigns is your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Wow. Uh, the, the ironic fun part of this is in January of 2015, the Royal Rumble was held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble 
and was summarily booed out of the building by the Philadelphia crowd, who, as I said last week, felt that Roman Reigns was being unnecessarily shoved down our throats. Mm -hmm. Ed, on Monday night, 